I felt that this was both crass and deceptive, and I found it extremely objectionable to take this man, his still warm body, and use it as、uh, some kind of literal bloody shirt in,、uh, in in your in your argument about where San Francisco is going. Hello, and you're welcome to the Big Tech Show with me, Adrian Weckler, in association with Square. Square helps you look after your business needs, from payments to menu management to online ordering. Visit Square.com for more. Now, earlier this month, the 43-year-old founder of the Cash App, Bob Lee, was killed in San Francisco. It took police a few days to arrest another tech worker, Nima Momeni, who police say was known to the deceased in connection with the attack. But by then, a narrative had spread across the media about Lee being a victim of San Francisco's decline into lawlessness, homelessness, and chaos. It was a narrative that several prominent tech industry figures jumped on, up to and including Elon Musk, making it a metaphor for San Francisco's political and social situation. Here to explain what happened and to discuss the broader issues is one of the journalists who has worked closely on the case, Joe Eskenazi, who's editor of San Francisco's Mission Local news site. Joe, you're very welcome to the podcast. Th- thank you for having me, Joe. Before we go into some of the broader issues around this troubling case,、uh, including some of the narratives and the tropes, can you remind us briefly who Bob Lee was? Sure. I think first and foremost, Bob Lee was a 43-year-old、uh, father of two,、uh, and、uh, much beloved in the tech world,、uh, where he was seen as both a brilliant programmer and an innovative mind, but also generous with his、uh, his time and uh, and his uh, intellect with up and comers.、Mm. And for those of us in Ireland who don't really know. The the history of his company, the, the cash app that he founded, because it's not available here. It's mainly in the U.S. and the U.K. It's a money transfer app,、um, pretty wildly successful. It, it's a huge part of Square's valuation. It's, it's estimated to be worth around forty billion dollars in its own right. But on the night of April fourth, police found Bob Lee. What condition did they find him in, and and what do authorities say happened to him? Well, let me go、uh, with what we knew at the time, and then what we、mm-hmm. later uh, discovered. Uh, uh, the police allege、uh, Bob Lee was found at about two thirty-five in the morning in、uh, a deserted part of downtown, after having called nine one one, which is the emergency line,、uh, screaming for help and claiming he'd been stabbed.、Uh, video, which is really hard to watch,、uh, you can see him staggering around, falling, getting up,、uh, trying to flag down cars which drive away.、Uh, Uh, perhaps they were callous. Perhaps they were just unnerved by, you know, a, a large man waving his arms with blood on him.、Uh, he uh, was unconscious when the police recovered him.、Uh, he would not、uh, regain consciousness. He would he would die at the hospital.、Uh, as you mentioned at the outset of the program,、uh, the grief and the real heartfelt uh, tribulation uh, tributations. <laughs> that came out for him、uh, very quickly devolved into uh, uh, recriminations of San Francisco,、mm-hmm. and this being part and parcel of,、uh, of of street crime and lawlessness and chaos, and、uh, and and just you know a, a devolution of the city.、Mm-hmm. From the outset, however, police never saw this as a random crime or as a robbery attempt because he did have that phone that he was calling nine one one on. So very quickly, the police zeroed in on this being a targeted attack. And it also became clear,、uh, reading the narrative afterwards, that they had their man very quickly.、Uh, they put their ducks in a line over the course of a week, and、uh, nine days after his killing,、uh, they made an arrest in the、uh, dawn hours、uh, just across the Bay Bridge in Emeryville, a small city next to Oakland, and arrested, as you mentioned, Nino Momeni, also a tech executive, though not of the caliber of Mr. Lee,、mm. uh, but someone that、uh, that they knew each other. And the apparent dispute was over、uh, some undisclosed manner of relationship that Mr. Lee had with Momeni's sister. Yes, what do we know about that? I mean, police did appear to say that the two men definitely knew each other.、Um, is there anything more known about their relationship, or about,、um, without getting too much into speculation,、uh, anything about the circumstances in which they may? Have uh, um, uh, 
they may have met or, or, or potentially fallen into dispute? Within the document uh, released on Friday, uh, which was a motion to detain without bail uh, filed by the district attorney here in San Francisco, they go into some detail and they lay out a timeline of what happened. And witnesses uh, observed uh, a disagreement between Momeni and Lee, in which it's unclear if it was heated or not, but certainly it seems that on Momeni's side it may have been, in which he was querying whether his sister had been doing drugs or doing anything untoward, and Mr. Lee was seen uh, assaging him and saying nothing un untoward is going on. Uh, in the pre-dawn hours in, you know, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, uh, April 4th, uh, Mr. Lee ends up at uh, the apartment uh, of Momeni's sister. Video uh, has the two men leaving the apartment, uh, getting into Momeni's car, and then Momeni drives uh, him into an area that is particularly bereft <laughs> and uh, and free of foot traffic uh, and allegedly basically ambushes him that is the allegation that uh, that it was a planned attack with a kitchen knife so this was a remote part of san francisco then or or a relatively quiet part of the city yes and no uh there has never been a time when i feel it would have been well advised for someone to wander alone through downtown san francisco uh, and not be at the mercy of whomever they came across but in this case it is an area utterly devoid of foot traffic. Mm. And I believe the allegation is that the stabbing took place under one of the stanchions of the Bay Bridge, which is an area that is uh, is quite dark and remote and would not have much in the way of foot traffic. Mm. Joe, what, what is the latest um, this week? Where, where does the accused stand? Is, is he currently being held? Um, and, and what is the latest on that? He is. He's being held uh, without bail in San Francisco County Jail, and there will be an arraignment on April 25th uh, to determine if that's going to continue to be the case. Mm. He is charged with murder. Mm. Now, Joe, part of this story, and it's something that you touched upon on, on what you've been writing about this, for better or for worse, one of the reasons this narrative uh, took over and became a global news story really was because many of uh, the tech industry's most senior executives, I'm thinking of people like Jason Calacanis, I'm thinking of people like Elon Musk, took this story and kind of used it as a metaphor about what they saw as San Francisco's uh, decline and uh, what they conflating Bob Lee's killing with San Francisco as you know descending into something that is is not um, a safe city how did you as somebody who's reporting there in san francisco what did you make of that as you saw that narrative narrative unfold i have lots of thoughts about this and i want to be sensitive all the time to bob lee and bob lee survivors and the people who knew him as a as a living breathing man uh so with that in mind, I felt that this was both crass and deceptive, and uh, I found it extremely objectionable to uh, take this man, his still warm body, and use it as uh, some kind of uh, literal bloody shirt in, uh, in, in, your, in your argument about where San Francisco is going. And some in, in that uh, milieu uh, were saying that this would be the inflection point and that uh, people in the tech sector would, would be demanding uh, change. The problem here is that I don't know where we'd be inflecting to, and I don't know what the change would be, because anyone who visits or lives in San Francisco knows that there is indeed a problem with overt misery and homelessness and drug use, uh, and, and it's right in your face. This is not like Los Angeles, which is a vast, sprawling city where people can you know live in uh, little visited quarters, uh, Skid Row, etc. In San Francisco, uh, homeless people are are living uh, cheek to jowl with very wealthy people because of the nature of the real estate here. Uh, so people do feel uneasy because they are seeing uh, uh, great deals of human misery, but also antisocial behavior. In San Francisco, also because of the wealth disparities uh, and the great wealth there is, there's a great deal of property crime, and that's been the case for a very long time. San Francisco's property crime rates are among the highest in the nation. Uh, your car can be broken into uh, with frustrating regularity. Uh, there is more burglary than, than, is, than anyone would want to have. 
But I feel it's a terrible thing to commingle crime like this because the, what property crime is and what being uneasy around people who make you uneasy is, is not the same as the likelihood of you being robbed or murdered. In San Francisco, the violent crime rate is very low compared to other cities of this size and very low historically. So we have to keep all these things in mind when we dive into San Francisco's problems, because otherwise you're just wildly swinging your fists around and you're going to hit the wrong thing. Did you feel that the people who were out in front in trying to use Bob Lee's death as a metaphor for San Francisco, um, that when the police arrested another technology uh, executive, which effectively punctured that theory or the, the metaphor that they were trying to advance, did you feel that they rode back on their on their theories or that they gave that you know, due accordance. It, it, it seemed to me that they felt that it was an unfortunate, uh, an unfortunate fact that got in the way of their narrative. I didn't see a lot of introspection and I didn't see a lot of humbleness and I certainly didn't see a lot of contrition. Uh, basically, the reaction boiled down to, I was wrong, but actually I was right. Or a lot of, are you saying that because this one killing wasn't due to street crazies that all these other problems are invalid? So that's, that's not a very productive attitude here. Because the approach that you would use to have a real solution to street homelessness and street drug use, uh, and the approach that you would have to approach property crime is not the same as what you would use to approach, you know, uh, quelling violent crime. and if you don't acknowledge where the levels of violent crime are and where the levels of property crime are and you know the levels of non-crime public homelessness that makes people feel uneasy then again you're you're not really solving a problem the only solutions i've seen posited in the wake of this uh terrible tragedy are things that uh this city and this country did in the past that led us to here and that was stiff sentences more cops locking up people who um, are unable to care for themselves. Uh, these are solutions that didn't work or, or even if well-meaning didn't work. So if this was easy to solve, it would have been solved. Mm. Homelessness, as we understand it, is a complex issue, a, a complex problem. Yet from Europe, when we visit the US and often particularly the, the West Coast cities, it is for some reason a lot more visible, as you pointed out a, a few minutes ago. I wonder, as a San Franciscan, do you, can you explain to our listeners here in Ireland or in Europe why it seems to be such an issue, particularly in West Coast cities in the US? I can, I can begin to explain that, but this is an extremely complicated problem. Uh, among other things, Everybody comes to San Francisco. Everybody comes to San Francisco, and that includes wealthy people uh, who make their fortunes in tech. But that also includes people who are, uh, you know, living on the margins. And San Francisco is an expensive city. And if you uh, don't have a job, you can find yourself slipping into homelessness very quickly. Uh, I do not buy into the narrative that homeless people come here for the services because uh, this has been something that has been bandied about by uh, politicians and others in the city for 30, 40 years, and they've never been able to quantify that. Uh, but certainly in San Francisco, you will not be uh, treated as punitively uh, for uh, harmless transgressions such as sleeping in public or less harmless transgressions such as doing drugs in public. So perhaps there's something to that. Uh, if you're asking why there is vast street homelessness in the United States, uh, a confluence of factors have come into play, and among them are the fact that we don't have adequate mental health care in, in the United States. And also, particularly in the West Coast, you have temperate cities, and you also have uh, a situation uh, uh, where the housing is so expensive that you're going to see things in front of you that in other parts of the country people would be doing in their own homes. Mm. And this, of course is in parallel with an unprecedented tech boom over the last 20 years, which has made millionaires and billionaires, um, particularly in uh, West Coast cities. And what do you make of that? How, do, how What's it like to live in a city 
where you have what you just described and yet you have so many millionaires walking around in their in their 20s and their 30s at the same time it, it's it's a very hard concept for me to get my head around and me too and i live here um in in large swaths of san francisco things are are on the surface very much as they've been you know i live i live in a quiet area of san francisco called the excelsior which was you know an immigrant heavy uh, area where 80 percent of the families here don't uh, speak any language other than english in the house and by the way that includes this one but uh in lots of san francisco you see uh real stark contrasts and you see uh staggering disparities of wealth in a way that you wouldn't associate with uh with the united states uh, you know, people living in tents uh, outside of million dollar condos. Uh, you do get situations where people uh, who are new to the city uh, are unused to the situation and in essence are trying to remake a situation uh, more to what they're accustomed to. And that's where you have tension, tensions with people who have been here for generations or more. Uh, specifically in ethnic enclaves like the Mission, where Latinos have been systematically priced out uh, and the area is, is certainly no longer majority Latino and uh, and has a very heavy tech flavor. So uh, certainly there there is a great deal of anxiety and tension and resentment. Mm. Just to come back to the media coverage in this case, I mean, you likened the, the, the coverage of this crime to a narrative of a doom loop, as you described it, that imperils the city's overall economic viability. And I think you also use the metaphor of San Francisco's metaphor, metamorphosis to Detroit by the Bay. Is that narrative just too attractive for media and for some tech figures to resist? Do you think we're in for more of that? Clearly. Uh, the term doom loop has been, uh, for good or ill, uh, the favorite word of some local publications. Uh, and I feel it's not helpful. I feel that we should be realistic about uh, how bad things can get for San Francisco, which more or less created its entire downtown as uh, office space. And then uh, through market forces, that entire downtown became tech offices. Uh, and the city encouraged this. And then uh, when the going got tough, uh, the tech got going. Uh, you're asking a lot of amoral companies to stick around and uh, and do something that their employees don't want, which is you know force them into the office and something that is not cost beneficial just for the sake of good old San Francisco. You know, generations ago, you had homegrown uh, uh, captains of real uh, of industry that might do that. Now you don't. Uh, as far as uh, the Detroit by the Bay. Uh, that was a somewhat unoriginal phrase of my own coining, but certainly any time an American city is facing a decline, that is the example that comes up. Uh, in San Francisco's case, it's kind of a poor one because uh, Detroit had a monoculture far starker than the United States. Sorry, it's far starker than, um, than San Francisco uh, here in the United States and also uh, hovered around 20% unemployment for a good amount of time before things got really bad. Uh, and here in San Francisco, the unemployment rate is is uh, almost comically low. Uh, the the real problem that San Francisco has now in terms of uh, income is that uh, the entire downtown office area is abandoned. Mm. And all of the ancillary economic models built around having that part of San Francisco be, you know, the center of the not just San Francisco, but the entire Bay Area. And, and people flooding in, flooding out like the tides every day. Whole regional transit structures are built on that, and it's not happening. So that can cause a series of collapses in which you have uh, less money coming into city coffers. You have less money coming into uh, transit systems that are dependent upon fare box recovery. And if those fail, more things fail. And that's your doom loop there. But uh, that, to me, the term doom implies no coming back and implies that you that there's nothing else can be done. And, and, and last thing I'll say is, uh, a very simple solution too simple. Some would say of why don't you lower the downtown rents, which are still very high and higher than other cities and higher than competing cities. Uh, we don't because people are leveraged and those people are going to take a bath, but at some point then we'll see how bad things are. Once rents come down to a sane 
market friendly level. And if people still don't sign up to take those office spaces, then you have a problem. Yeah, I, I know that we have broadened this discussion out a little bit, but I, and, and if we had a lot more time, I think I'd probably go into urban and cultural issues and town planning and a lot of issues like that. I myself um, I'm about to finish my 50 states before I'm 50 uh, mission in the next couple of months. And one of the things I have noticed um, echoes very much with what you've said in a lot of cities and towns uh, across all U.S. states where the the inside of the cities of the towns are, is starting to feel hollowed out, but two or three miles outside, it can still be quite busy. And I, I, it has left me scratching my head as to why these beautiful, historic, uh, very picturesque, very atmospheric main streets and towns and cities are being left, you know, with literal tumbleweed. I, I saw a literal tumbleweed last month um, in, in the city of Amarillo, uh, while while there are, you know, malls and, and suburbs which seem to be seem to be okay that's obviously a much broader issue and i'm sure you probably it sounds like you you would have quite a lot of views uh, on that also um but you're not wrong that that's part of what was leading into this and that's part of what ended up being a problem is that we ended up uh, people ended up incorporating bob lee's killing into all of these other situations that you know are bad harbingers for san francisco and things that make people uneasy but again uh I think it's not a good idea to commingle these situations into one great er story of San Francisco's decline, especially when looking at the overarching picture of San Francisco's crime statistics, this doesn't work. And now looking at the specific nature of the allegations against the man who killed Bob Lee uh, or allegedly killed Bob Lee, it doesn't work. So it doesn't work on a micro or macro level. Um, and if you're going to pull back and just say, still things are terrible, you're not being very productive. And, and again, I think it was just a very crass use of this man's life um, to fit a pre-existing narrative. Well, Joe Eskenazi, um, who's editor of San Francisco's Mission Local News site, thank you very much for joining us on the podcast and congratulations on your work, which has been properly cited by newspapers like the New York Times and, and the New York Post and, and others uh, who have picked up uh, on your reporting of this. Um, that's all we have time for this week. Uh, you've been listening to and watching me, Adrian Weckler, and here in the Big Tech Show in association with Square. Thanks also to Tabitha Monaghan, who produced, to Gav Hennessy on sound and Conan Doherty on video. And we will talk to you the same time next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.